any moron who hasn't thought deeply and studied deeply history and how government works can go and start a podcast or a YouTube channel and start rave, ranting and raving about the, the idiot elites who are mismanaging the country. Even though this person who's ranting and raving has zero governing, governing experience, zero deep understanding about how governance works, how politics works. And so he's ranting and raving about his favorite enemies who he's demonized. And he's going to infect the minds of millions of his followers with that same toxic ideology, that conspiratorial thinking that's going to start to eat away at the, the, the institutions and the, the bureaucratic foundations, which are actually the pillars that are supporting the entire system of democracy. You see, but he's ignorant without understanding what he's doing. And his followers are ignorant and don't understand what they're listening to and how they're being brainwashed by it. And who's to say which of these news sources and media sources is the right one? Does Leo get to decide? Does the president get to decide? Does your, does your church leader get to decide? Does your professor get to decide? Does your mother or father get to decide? Do you get to decide? See, when everybody gets to decide for themselves, now we have this problem of Ken Wilber calls it a perspectival madness. What happened was that before, most people at Stage Blue were just sort of forced into seeing the world through the perspective of Stage Blue of the society that they were born into. So if you were born into America in the 1960s, like a baby boomer, you saw the world according to sort of the American mythos, whatever that was. It was a very artificial way of looking at the world, but everybody sort of got imprinted with that way of looking at the world. If you're born today, you know, a millennial or whatever the next generation is after that, um, now there's, there's so much diversity. There's so much more diversity in perspectives. You could become a neo-Nazi, you could become a neocon, an alt-right person, you could become a libertarian, you can become some anti-fascist, you can become, there's so much, there's so many different perspectives now that are, that are considered um, acceptable and that are, that are easily accessible. You can access the books, the websites, the blogs, the podcasts, whatever you want. You can create your own echo chamber that will feed back to you exactly whatever you want to think the world is like. So if you think that Jews, elite Jews are controlling the world, you can find sources of information that will feed all that back to you as confirmation bias. And then you'll really become convinced that you're right. And if you're some conservative, you can find a conservative news source that will just feed back to you everything that you want. And you will then just get entrenched in that. And if you're a liberal, you can find a liberal news source that will feed everything back to you, create this echo chamber, and then you're gonna be stuck in that and unable to see the world in, in, in any other way. And in a sense, now there's no daddy figure. There's no ultimate authority figure to tell average citizens what to believe, what's true anymore. See, one of the functions of the king in the past, or the pope, and oftentimes, the position of the king and the pope were interchangeable or they were held by the same person, basically. The religious chief and the military chief and the political chief, they were oftentimes one person. Divine monarchs, they called it in Europe, uh, where the king was the head of the church and the state. Or they could be separate people. But anyways, you had, you had in the past, you had a couple of big daddy authority figures who told you what was true and what was false, what was good and what was evil, what was acceptable and what was unacceptable, what was decent and what was indecent, what was an ex uh, a reasonable perspective and what was an insane or a criminal perspective. But as democracy is happening, those big daddy authority figures are going away. They're getting questioned and it's right to question them because of course what they were peddling us, they weren't peddling us absolute truth. Nothing that some king or pope says is the absolute truth. It's just one perspective. That's right. But in a sense, it was functional and it was useful, at least in that time in human development, because we needed one source of truth 
one source of morality in the past because that's what unified us in order to overcome the survival challenges that we faced, which were very serious. Today, the survival challenges have largely been overcome. Most of us are not in imminent threat of getting, you know, ransacked by a neighboring country, raped and pillaged. Most of us don't live under that threat. So in that sense, we've sort of transcended and overcome those survival challenges, but we have new survival challenges. Now our survival challenge is how do we survive together while allowing all of us to be so diverse? See, in the past, if you lived in a society a thousand years ago, everybody in your town, in your village, and in your nation probably had the same religion. Probably prayed to the same God. Probably went to the same church. Probably had the same ideas about race, ethnicity, homosexuality, economics, politics, and other things. It was this sort of siloed, narrow culture. Very nationalistic and ethnocentric. People didn't even know that there were nations or cultures outside of their culture. Because a thousand years ago, there were no jet airplanes, there were no atlases, there were no uh, doc nature documentaries or documentaries about other countries. There was no internet. You couldn't interact with an Indian person or a Chinese person or a South American person the way that you can today. There was no international media. So nowadays, you know, everybody watches Hollywood movies, and Hollywood movies are very diverse. There are Hollywood movies about homosexuality, there's Hollywood movies about racism, there's Hollywood movies about whites and blacks and Asians and, and uh, uh, Chinese and Japanese and Africans and even aliens. And, and so this Hollywood culture now has become global culture, but what it's done is it's exposed these siloed narrow cultures to other cultures. Now, even if you live in Africa in some little village, you've probably seen some, you know, Hollywood movies. And those Hollywood movies have, have exposed you to new ways of life. You've seen gay married men, which you would never see in some African village. You, you see it in a Hollywood movie. Or you see some, you know, some Asian person living some weird Asian lifestyle through some YouTube video that you would never have seen if you were living in Africa a thousand years ago or whatever. And so th this amount of diversity is difficult to hold together 